Hey and welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. So in this video I'd like to go over those companions which will help your party deal more damage along with giving them extra survivability through defensive buffs and also those other utility companions that will just benefit your party with action point gain, recharge speed and like movement speed. So we have a whole list of them right here. So firstly let's go to the damage buffing companions and let's knock a few off the list. First we have this dread warrior which very misleadingly has its siphon strike which will say it gives you the power and yes it will give you the power the summoner but not your party members and then it has this warrior's thirst to effectively increase the damage dealt by 10 percent for the duration of the heal on everybody who's targeted by it unfortunately that does not work how it says it all we can see this when we go and summon him and take note of my power it's nearly 60,000 there he goes and Mr. Dread Warrior will start attacking this dummy and when he uses Siphon Strike you can see we've gained 5,000 power there now we've gained up to 10,000 power now unfortunately this would be decent if it could affect all party members but it cannot he gives you 5000 power just from the siphon strike plus another 10000 power from the warrior's thirst this is only for the summoner so it's not going to be a companion on this list so we're going to have to remove him here another companion is this priestess of sahanine moonbeam she supposedly will give you 50 critical strike per level that she has now that's a bit odd as with the combat rework companions no longer have levels but supposedly on mythic she should have 50 levels as legendary i believe was 45 levels back in the day if i'm remembering things so she should give 2500 critical strike unfortunately when we go in combat and see what she can actually do all she does is gives us 100 critical strike so that's 0.1 percent there so that's next to no buff so we're just going to have to remove her as well so now for the companions that actually work to buff our damage we have this alpha compi the harper bard the fire blossom zealot zariel or zordial minsk the succubus or the incubus this tutor the stalwart lion drids du warden and finally this spined devil how do these different damaging buff companions compare with one another well i've made a chart right here and you can see the spine devil being at the nice top there the alpha compi being down there at the bottom and it has the ability as you can see here it's call of vengeance as soon as the alpha compi drops below 50 percent of its hit points everybody will gain a one percent increase to their overall damage and the companions a 20 percent increase so this isn't going to happen a whole lot of the time so i've made it to be about 25 percent of the time this will be up so it would be an overall increase of 0.25 percent so next up we have this harper bard now it has the benefit when we look at it here the bardic inspiration giving that extra power and critical strike now we can see when we're in combat and he uses its powers we will gain 800 critical strike and 800 power and this will be in the ratings so as long as you can make use of that we can see when we do some math that this overall damage increase will just be about 0.27 percent and that is taking into consideration that the harper bard will only have this buff to your ratings for five seconds every 15 seconds so next we have this fire blossom zealot and we can see that in its abilities it can give us up to 1000 forte now depending on what class you are forte will give you different benefits on a dps character you will see that forte will give you power as its main thing and then two stats one being offense one being defensive so that gives you a total of stats of 0.5 percent to your power and 0.25 percent to another offensive stat and if that was combat advantage that would add to a 0.34 percent damage increase then we have a zariel or zordial and we can see that they have a power where they have a chance to increase the damage that the target would take by one percent now since this is a chance i've made it to be about 
half of the time that you will gain this benefit and thus it's at 0.5 percent now there's an asterisk there because i don't actually have the companion i'm not intending to spend the zen either to get it just for this simple small damage increase so this is giving it a generous amount of overall damage of 0.5 percent for all i know it could be a lot worse than that then we move to minsk and he has the ability to give you that extra combat advantage in that area as soon as you have him summoned and he goes in combat he will use it and anybody within this area when he finishes this circle so when it disappears you gain that extra combat advantage and this is actually only three percent and that will only last you the total of 10 seconds and it will be 30 seconds before he uses that cute sense power again so we can see that overall damage if you do some math is just a one percent increase of course you would have to make sure that you have room in your stats to gain that extra combat advantage so you'd have to make sure you're not capped out otherwise gaining more would just be useless and it would be a no damage increase then we have the income boss and the second boss now this is where it's a bit confusing because the second boss and the income boss are great they have the ability to at the beginning of the fight use this massive cone of a deadly kiss as you can see the damage is pretty big and heavy as well with this also bleed on the targets now that deadly kiss can cause a vulnerability on the target much like you have with the spine devil and this causes the target to take 10 percent more damage you can see that debuff on them there along with the bleeds the debuffs the one to the right now for the second bus and the income bus this effect of vulnerability only lasts five seconds it only lasts five seconds and they will only do that deadly kiss again after about 35 seconds therefore if you're in a boss fight and you're lasting quite a while you would only gain an overall 1.43 percent damage increase but you'd be better off with the spine devil and we'll get to that then we have the tutor now with its ability you can see that when you have a group of five players put together you will form a study group and that study group everybody in it will gain five percent more combat advantage again like minsk you're going to have to make sure you're able to fit that into your build make sure that you only have 85 percent combat advantage and when somebody in your group summons the tutor you would then have 90 percent and that would give you if you do the math a total of a 2.7 percent overall damage increase with that extra combat advantage so if everybody could take advantage of that that would be great if somebody could have him in the party then we have Dridst and he straight up just has that power to give you 3% extra damage increase from Stab the Way. Very neat bonus since it's always going to be in effect and you can always take the benefit from it. So that's straight up just 3%. Then we have the stalwart Golden Lion. This is with an asterisk and the big reason is that everybody is going to have to have a stalwart lion summoned to actually gain the benefit from this radiant weapon now i went and tested this on a dummy and you can see the combat log it looks like this you'll have your radiant weapon and after seven minutes of testing you can see it still was only two percent of my overall damage when all i was doing was hitting with my at will valora strike now looking in the vault of stars you can see this was the majority of the fight there i had a party and we all ran the stalwart lion this was from the first boss to the end and this we can see the radiant weapon here and the amount of hits and the maximum hit was 155 yes the more stacks you have the more damage those hits can deal they can even hit for zeros but you can see all the way down here that the maximum amount of damage I was gaining from this radiant weapon of my overall damage was only 3%. Therefore, I have it jotted down at only a 3% overall party damage increase. Of course, if you have other things, like when I run this stalwart golden line as a tank, it can end up as about 20% of my damage. It can be a lot of damage on a, on a tank where you're just not generally doing a lot of damage anyway. But as a DPS character, yeah. You saw it was only 3% damage there in the Vault of Stars. It could be higher in your trial. It could be a little bit higher. But I still don't think it's warranting everybody to use the Golden Lion. But I could be proven wrong if I do some further testing with them. But it's a rough requirement to have everybody to have this Lion when it's pretty rare. Finally, we have the Spine Devil. 
And yes, like the second pass and the income pass, it has the ability to give that vulnerability to the target. He has its impaling fork. Unfortunately, he won't do it at the beginning of the fight. You can see he doesn't have the debuff, but he'll do this splash of those spines and now he should do that impaling fork. He charges it up and there we go. You can see the same debuff that the second pass and the income bus put on their dummy. Very nicely this time, the debuff lasts for a total of 10 seconds. And he will again do this after 15 seconds. You can see he'll do another impaling fork. There we go. So there's only a five second window where this debuff is not active. Therefore, since there is a time where it's not active and it would normally give a 10% buff, you can see 33% of the time it's not active. Therefore, we reduce the damage by that amount and he only gives 6.66% overall damage increase to the party but keep in mind, it's again only single target buff. And in AoE, you absolutely want somebody to have an income pass or a succumb pass. And otherwise, Dridst is just a very good one to always use. The same with the tutor. Unfortunately, well, I actually think fortunately, the same companion cannot give this buff stacking on top of each other. You cannot have multiple spine devils and stack this 6.6% overall buff all the time. You could have two and you could increase this to 10% by always having the debuff active on the target. Same with the income pass and the succumb pass, but they won't stack on top of each other. The income pass and the spine devil have the same debuff, so they don't stack with each other either. Multiple drits won't stack with each other. Multiple tutors won't either multiple Minsks won't, and so on. So keep that in mind when you want to have summoned companions and make sure you're not having multiple people having the same companions because at some point it gets irrelevant, especially when like people have multiple drits. There's zero point in that. You're better off getting either a companion that gives a utility buff or a survivability buff instead, or just using one of the other companions that nobody else is using in the party for that extra damage buff, as you can see here. Now we go to the next section. I have a multiple different companions here, and let's go to the ones that are going to give that extra survivability. We have this Cyclops War Drummer, and it has the ability to have its percussion. It will give himself and all nearby allies 3% damage reduction for 10 seconds. Now, unfortunately, he will only do this ability every 20 seconds. So he will only have a maximum of about 1.5% damage reduction if you take that over time into consideration. However, a much reliable companion to reduce the damage people take would be Brunar. He just straight up has that 3% damage reduction to all allies all of the time, like you have with Dritzt. So a very neat companion to use. And those are pretty much the only two companions that are going to buff up survivability in that way by just giving statistics. Of course, you have healer companions, you have shielding companions, but they're a different matter altogether. Now, finally, we have those companions which will just give you those utility buffs. And namely, we have your Regis, who will give you that extra recharge speed, allowing you to cast those encounter powers a second or two faster. 3% is like nothing, so it's only going to shave off like a split second or so. So you're barely going to notice it. Then we have our Wolfgar, which will just give you 3% more action point gain. Again, this, in my opinion, is a little bit pointless unless you are in a party that struggles to get action points, your daily power for every minute when you have your artifact call. So I generally wouldn't use him. If you just want some extra movement speed, sure, you can always run with Cadibri, who will give that flat 3%, or you could run with this Vistani Wanderer, who will just give that 5% increase to your movement speed. And finally, last companion I'd like to give an honorable mention to is this Black Death Scorpion. It has the unique ability to make it so that you can have combat advantage against this target 100% of the time. And so long as he can target this dummy, you will always have combat advantage against it no matter where you stand. This can be a major benefit in a boss fight where the boss moves around a lot and you can't guarantee you're always going to have it flanked. On top of that, in a trial, let's say Rise of Tiamat, where you can't get behind the boss because she's massive and the arena doesn't allow you to, having combat advantage against those dragon heads can be a 90% damage buff 
to everybody. That's insane. You're basically making this combat advantage stat actually useful. So that's pretty much it. Here again is the chart with all of the party damage buff and debuff companions and the ones you should be using. And they would be mainly just your Chucher, Dridst and the Spine Devil. And for AoE, you ideally want your Sakam Buffs or your Income Buffs just for that extra damage and also the vulnerability they give to those targets. It's wonderful, especially when you just have groups of mobs and you're just trying to kill them as quickly as possible and then move on to the next, since she does this massive kiss area at the beginning of the fight as soon as she's summoned. She hits all three dummies. That cone is huge. So with that said, that's going to conclude this video. Hopefully it has been somewhat helpful and insightful to you guys. I know there's a big discussions right now with companions getting nerfed and adjusted and potentially all companions might get reduced down to only having like one digit encounter DPS like 8,000, 7,000. Many of the companions that recently got nerfed on this preview server are down there like Suna, the Cold Iron Warrior, the Air Archon. Who is next? Who is to say that? All of the companions won't get put there eventually. And if that's the case, we're definitely better off running with companions that will just increase our own overall damage. Now with this list posted, people are of course going to go and inflate those prices of all those companions I have mentioned. But don't just go and spend millions and millions to spend some companion that's just going to give you a minor, minor increase. So with that said, I'd like to give a massive thank you to all of my channel members for helping me keep my channel going. If I presented this well, consider leaving the video a like, and if you're new around here, consider subscribing. See you guys around. Goodbye for now.